The investigation continues this morning in Turkey. Welcome back to Acadiana's Morning News. There is a local connection to the, um, the bombing that happened over there. The Pine Leaf Boys, well-known kind of UL, born and bred band. Uh, they were on a State Department tour of the region, actually in Istanbul, Turkey, yesterday, uh, but, but quickly reached out to family and friends. I'm um, just saying, hey, we're okay, we're good. Uh, the crazy part is now you kind of have to find an airport and a way to come home. Mm -hmm. And you, sh you think about this, okay, I mean, it's at the airport. It's, can, it's, it's seemingly contained, the crime scene especially, because you can close down the airport. Mm -hmm. but, the problem, but the problem with that is, is that, um, you know, the whole country kind of has to suffer. The whole country just kind of stops in its place. Um, especially as this investigation into yeah. the bombing at the airport continues. Yeah, fearful. It's just, uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, unfortunately, I feel like it may just be the reality of the world we live in, on, yeah. live in right now. Um, joining us on the phone right now, Dr. Alex Del Carmen, uh, terrorism expert. Really, uh, this is your forte. You know the history of this and, and why this keeps on happening. Uh, good morning. How are you today, sir? Good morning. So where are we right now in this investigation? The, uh, the airport, are, do we have flights going and coming now? And, and what does this mean in general for a country that's dealing with this to shut down transportation? So, so the airport is par uh, partially uh, closed, and, and it's also operational in certain parts of the airport. However, I think what we, what we see here is a psychological effect that may be intended or unintended on behalf of the Turkish government to let the terrorists know that life is going to continue to go on in Turkey. Mm. Um, this is not a new approach uh, to address terrorism. Uh, the Israelis do this often. Uh, in fact, they have an entire team of people that show up to a terrorist attack uh, site, and they basically clean it up within hours of the attack taking place uh, with the intent of showing terrorists that life will continue to go on and the damage will be minimal. I would I would imagine that if you are you know, doing this and, and you are behind these attacks, you know, in this way, you would want to see, you know, the cleanup happen for months, the investigation taking forever. I mean, we have that own situation here in our country with the Orlando attack where, I mean, obviously this specific, you know, shooter in the Orlando case is dead, so it's not him that can revel in it. But, I mean, we were told it could be weeks, even months before that crime scene is turned over. Right. That's exactly right, and I think that in the United States we have a different approach to it, more from a from a clinical, you know, a criminological perspective. Whereas in Europe and the Middle East, uh, you know, they have a different mindset towards it, which is that they believe that the crime scene is still important, but but there is also that psychological effect towards the public and the terrorists as well. So this airport in Turkey is is known pretty well, you know, about being secure. They have a primary security. I guess checkpoint right when you walk in the doors and then you go through a second security as you're going back to the gates. Is there any clue at this point how uh, these suspected suicide bombers made it through the primary to get into the airport at all? Well, I mean, the primary checkpoint is nothing more than a security guard with, or a, or a, a police officer with a, a long-range uh, rifle, you know, standing at the door making okay. sure that you're not bringing visible explosives inside the airport. So I would argue that it, what probably happened, uh, and, and we're going to hear in the next few days and weeks uh, confirmation of this, is that terrorists were basically uh, posing as passengers and mm -hmm. sitting in a vehicle waving goodbye at the at the officer. I mean, that that's probably what happened. What does security and surveillance equipment in you know an airport like this or by any other crime scene do for investigators? I mean, I feel like it was within about 45 minutes we had video of the blast happening. I mean, there were obviously cameras all over the airport. Does this speed up or slow down the process of identifying who did this, a motive, that sort of thing? No, I mean, it definitely helps. Uh, the, the sad part is it helps ex facto. It helps after the event. Um, yeah. But, but, but it does help a great deal. I mean, it allows us to be able to track uh, the type of clothing the person wore, how the person walked, uh, where the person came in through. Uh, we, we were even able to see what kind of explosives they used uh, or have a good guess uh, and then match it with the actual uh, crime scene, uh, the type of destruction, um, how they carried it, what their intent was. So, it, so it's incredibly helpful, but, but as, I said, as I said before, um, the sad part is that it is after the, the fact. 
So what's next for investigators? Uh, I mean, are we just helping the victims right now? Are we identifying if this was indeed ISIS? I know I read a lot about Turkey having some other internal sort of terrorist-esque uh, groups kind of, kind of going back and forth in the country. Do we know anything more about who's responsible? So right now what we're doing is, uh, I imagine that the Turkish government is actually going through very meticulously a list of, of bad guys that they know in their, in their country and trying to gather intelligence if anyone was behind it. But, but clearly to most of us that see it from, from the outside, uh, the modus operandi, the way that they went about uh, committing their crime has uh, ISIS written all over it. So, so this is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I would be shocked if, if we hear in the next few days and weeks that there was another group. And if there was another group out of Turkey that did this, uh, it's probably going to be someone that was very closely affiliated with ISIS as well. So, but, but the ISIS signature is all over this one. All right. Joining us on the phone, Dr. Alex Del Carmen, terrorism expert. We appreciate your time, sir. Thank you.